Hi everybody, Doug Hippie here from EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Today we're going to focus on six need to know sketch traits from within Creo. These are kind of fun, so pay attention here. So I'm just going to go right into sketcher mode, and from there I'm going to begin my sketch. So right off the bat, I'm just going to go into 2D sketch area so you can see these things a little bit better. The first one I want to make sure that everybody's aware of is by holding down your right mouse button, you get your context sensitive menu. This one's been around for a while, but it's a good one to be uh, cognizant of because it keeps you from having to go up into the ribbon to get access to common sketch elements. In this case here, I'm just going to go ahead and do a corner rectangle. And there's a couple of things that I want to show here. I've started to anchor my rectangle here right now, but let's say I want to create a reference on the fly. Well, I can very easily do that by holding down my Alt key, coming over to the reference that I want, selecting on it, releasing the Alt key, and now you'll notice that a reference has been created. Now I can just go ahead and snap right to that reference. And you can do that on the fly as long as you've started out your sketch. Okay, so in other words, I have to be somewhere within that sketch at the time. The other thing I want to note here, you'll notice that my sketcher elements are green right now. Basically, they're highlighted, which gives me the ability to start to manipulate and move things around. A couple things I want to show. One, you've got the little white filled uh, drag handles now on the arrows. That gives you the ability to do two different things. One, I can dynamically move them on the fly while I'm at them. But the really cool one here, once you've positioned it to the approximate location that you want, just double click on that little drag handle, that little white filled arrow there, and I get right into my edit dimension mode. Okay, let's let's see that again. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to move this arrow up and down here right now. When I'm positioned approximately where I would like to have it, I just double click on it, puts me right into edit dimension, type in my new dimension value, and I'm good to go. Okay, one other one that I want to highlight here while we're there. Again, I'm going to use that right mouse button context sensitive menu, and I'm going to choose to uh, create some fillets here. So I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to create four fillets in my sketch. And I'm intentionally going to make them different so that you can kind of see my next uh, element that I'm going to highlight. So when I complete my sketch by using my middle mouse button, again, you'll notice that those four new fillets I put in there are highlighted green. Basically, it gives me the ability to start changing some of the attributes of those. In this case here, I'm going to use my right mouse button. And now I'm going to go down into the constraint area. It's showing me what constraints are available with those four fillets. In this case here, only the equal constraint is available. So I can just highlight on that, release it. Now all four of those fillets are at the same constraint of equal value. Nice feature to be in, makes things much quicker. Now you'll notice I've created this rectangle. I've altered dimensions. I've moved it around. I've added fillets. I've made an equal constraint out of those fillets without ever once going into my ribbon. This is the speed that they've created in Creo to keep you from having to move that mouse all over the place. Let's look at a couple of other ones that are kind of nice to have. I'm just going to go ahead and start out on a new line chain here. And you'll notice that as I'm doing these things, little constraints are coming up, showing me those constraints. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, constrain this here so that I've got a perpendicular constraint to it. Okay, I'm out of it. You'll notice that those two little line elements are still highlighted. This is another nice one. Rotate and resize. Two aspects I want to highlight. This is the same as if you've copied and pasted from within your sketcher. Okay? Or if you've brought in a sketch from the sketch palette or from a sketch file. Two things I want to highlight. Same functionality. Here's the drag handle for the sketch. So if I begin to do my rotation, you'll notice that it's rotating around that pivot point. Well, maybe I don't want to have it rotate around that pivot point. I can just hover my cursor over the grab handle, right mouse button, drag that down to where I want to have my new pivot point. Now, as I come in and start to do my pivot, you'll notice it's pivoting where I want to have it. So that one, again, is the right mouse button and being able to resize and rotate. Okay, let's look at one more here before we move on and uh, close out our tip of the week. 
I'm just going to start another line chain. We're going to talk a little bit about the right mouse button some more here, except this time in the middle of my sketch. Let's say I don't want to have this thing snapping to this horizontal. I want to be just slightly below horizontal. All right. If I right mouse button one time, you're going to notice it's now locked into the horizontal constraint that was just highlighted. If I right mouse button on it one more time, it's now ignoring that constraint. So I don't have to worry about it snapping to that horizontal constraint. Okay, so let's just continue on here. So here I've got a perpendicular constraint. If I want it to be locked, I go ahead and I right mouse button one time. You'll see the circle around that constraint showing me that it's locked. You'll notice that now I cannot move that from that perpendicular constraint. One more time, you'll notice that it gets the hash or the slash through it. Now I don't have to worry about it uh, snapping to that uh, perpendicular constraint. I can put it, place it wherever I would like it. Okay, same thing with parallelism. If I want to lock this parallelism and make sure that that parallelism stays, I can do that by, by using the right mouse button. So, give those things a try. If you need some more feedback or input, feel free to reach out to your friendly EAC account manager. Let them know you saw one of Doug's tips of the weeks on the sketcher and you'd like to get more information. This is Doug Hippie from EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Hoping you have a great week. See y'all later.